This video is sponsored by Opera GX, the world's first gamer browser for gamers like you maybe. Are you a gamer? I've had a lot of computer issues over the years making me really careful and aware of every little thing that's running on my setup at any given time. Certain browsers out there can be huge resource hogs and it's always a chore to have to manage my tabs to figure out which is hogging all of my RAM and processing power. Luckily with Opera GX's GX control, I have a full interface to see how much each tab is using and I can even limit the amount of RAM and CPU usage, meaning my browser will be causing as little impact as possible while I'm playing games. Even online games don't have to be affected because the GX control interface comes with a network limiter as well that can control the amount of bandwidth Opera uses at any given time. The best part of the browser for me personally is that I can have all of my apps in one place. If I want to listen to music, I can use the GX player to connect to Spotify and listen through the browser. That's one less application installed on my computer. I can even funnel notifications through the Twitch and Discord integrations within the browser. I can see who needs my attention on Discord or even get notifications in the browser when one of my friends goes live. And you could, uh, I don't know, maybe get a notification when I go live. I don't know, maybe. Opera GX starts in dedicated dark mode and has a ton of customizability through color scheme themes, giving you full control on the color and feel of your browser. It'd be really based and rad-pilled for you to download Opera GX today, my little pog champ. So check out the link below in the description and pinned comment. And let me know how Opera GX is helping you in the comments. Imagine for a second a weapon that was similar to the gun lance, but without the artillery aspect. That's the lance and the next weapon we'll be covering in this history series focused on all weapons within the mainline Monster Hunter franchise. It's a slow weapon that makes up for its high defensive capabilities, but don't think it can't output a large amount of damage as well. In fact, in the early generations of Monster Hunter, the lance was one of the dominating weapons in how much DPS it could output and how fast monsters could be slain by experts of the weapon. It even has the ability to block while attacking, making you a walking battle tank just waiting to unload a bunch of brain dead baby damage on an unsuspecting monster. As I mentioned in previous videos, I'd like to take your opinions into consideration when it comes to which weapon I will cover next. If you want your weapon to be covered soon, be sure to let me know in the comments. That being said, there are only two left, meaning you'll either be seeing light bow gun or heavy bow gun, or maybe both in one video, I'm not sure yet. Don't worry, I will make a medium bow gun video eventually, but I'm gonna focus on the main weapons in the series first. Also, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing so Susan and the YouTube algorithm will release my family. I'm currently entered into the King of Iron Fist tournament in order to win enough money to save them, but I have to fight a bear, a panda, and an alien in order to do so. I also just watched a balding father beat the life out of his demon child, and I think Akuma from Street Fighter is here. It's not looking good for me. Anyway, I'm Super Rad, and this is the history of the Lance. Similar to the Dual Blades video, this Lance video will condense the first and second generation of Monster Hunter into one, with me using Freedom Unite footage to make editing this a bit easier. The differences overall are fairly minimal between both generations, but we will discuss them. Lance also has a rich history in Generation 1 as one of the best weapons for stagger locking or headlocking enemies for easy kills. In the early generations, Lance is going to be focusing on the head and advancing with the shield. The ability to poke upwards with the Lance makes it invaluable in attacking the head of wyverns or other other monsters where these hitboxes are generally high up. You can unsheathe the weapon using the right analog stick in the older games or the triangle button in the PSP series onward, and I'll mostly be using button terminology here. You can perform a lunging forward poke as your unsheathe attack by pressing the triangle button while running. These are technically called thrusts, but I'll mostly be saying pokes. Just everyone says pokes, okay? Okay. Once unsheathed, you have the ability to block with your giant shield by pressing the R or R1 button depending on the game. Players can also draw into a shield block by pressing triangle and circle while holding R. There's a traditional attack combo that performs three consecutive stabs by pressing the triangle button up to three times, and the circle button is used to perform a similar attack that not only is angled upwards, meaning it's great for attacking the head, but overall has higher motion values than the triangle combo, and you can weave the forward and upward thrusts together. The shield is one of the best best in the games. It can fully block all damage with minimum recovery animations, allowing you to turtle in place through multiple high damage attacks while still dealing your own damage against the monster. This is balanced out by making the Lancer much less mobile than many of the other weapon options out there. I should note that some attacks are considered unblockable even to the Lance Shield, unless under very specific circumstances in future games and for some really strong attacks you need guard skills if you want to stop them completely. Now similar to Gun Lance, the Lance can't actively dodge while the weapon is unsheathed but they can back hop by pressing X while in place, meaning this is your main evasive tool. 
but you'll probably be focusing more on pure defense than evasion. In Generation 1, this hop can only be performed once, but in Generation 2, it can be performed up to three times in succession, and the distance of the hop can be lengthened by holding back on the left analog stick while performing it. However, long hopping, as it's called, ends the hopping combo, so make sure you know when you want to use it. You can also sidestep after attacks, just like the gun lance. To make the shield an even more alluring option to hunters, they can attack while blocking by holding R and pressing triangle or circle, which will perform a brief poking attack while hiding behind the shield. The downside of this attack is that it has a lower motion value than the normal triangle or circle attacks and it can't be chained together, so you do have the option of playing defensive but there is a bit of a reward on going offensive slightly. Lances also get access to a special charging attack by pressing triangle and circle together. This move has the lancer charge forward with their shield and the lance in front of them, attacking anything in their path with a few caveats. For one, the ability drains stamina, meaning you need to watch and manage your stamina before actively using this ability, otherwise you may find yourself in a sticky situation. Additionally, the weapon will bounce off of the monsters and present a recoil animation before continuing the charge if the weapon is below green sharpness. If at green or above, the weapon will plow through enemies without any bouncing whatsoever. Pressing triangle during the charge will end the animation with a forward stab. This weapon really breathed simplicity while offering an experience that was overall different from the majority of other weapons available. It helped offer a level of selection that wasn't really seen in games like it at the time, and the overall simplicity would try to stay at the forefront of the weapon's design, while adding in new mechanics and options in future generations. We'll see that as we move on to Generation 3 now. A lot of weapons were removed from the release of Tri, but Lance was not one of them. In fact, it has managed to be a staple of the series throughout its entirety along with weapons like the Greatsword. Generation 3 actually brought a lot of functionality to the Lance's arsenal, more than you may have expected. One of the smaller changes is how Triangle and Circle, or X plus A, have changed when used together. Originally holding X plus A together would perform the charging attack, but hunters may notice that this isn't as simple as it used to be. Instead, pressing these buttons together will perform a new arced swinging motion which is good for quickly dispatching large mobs of small monsters. Hunters can still activate the stampeding charge attack by pressing the typical button combination while guarding, and it also has a few minor mechanical changes. For one, the hunter will deal more damage if they rush forward long enough to see a charged flash appear around their weapon. This is new to Generation 3, and I believe ups the damage to incentivize hunters into using this from a distance rather than point blank for some reason. You can also press the special attack button to do the charging advance. It's more convenient since it's a single input and you minimize the chances of doing another attack like the charged counter poke or the advancing guard, which we'll talk about in a second. There's actually a lot more you can do with guarding now. First is the guard dash or the advancing guard, which can be done by pressing forward and X or triangle while blocking. The hunter will rush forward slightly with their shield out at a small stamina cost, and anything that hits the hunter during this animation will be blocked at the cost of no additional stamina, making it an effective means of pushing forward or advancing on a monster without taking too big of a hit to your stamina overall. It can also be followed up with the shield bash maneuver that performs stun damage by pressing X or triangle following the guard dash animation. After the shield bash, you can also continue your combo with a forward poke by pressing X or triangle, however it is impossible to continue it with an upward poke or an arc swipe. One of the bigger mechanical changes is a brand new move used solely for counterattacking. Hunters can press the circle or A button while guarding to begin charging a new high damage poking maneuver. After fully charging, the attack will fire off a poke to damage whatever it comes in contact with, but this isn't what makes the attack unique. Instead, while this charging animation is taking place, any attacks against the hunter will be absorbed and they will counterattack with the poke. This isn't just for attacks, but anything really, including roars, meaning it is possible to open up encounters by countering the roar and immediately following up with a combo. This was extremely beneficial to the lance, and complemented its defensive style while still promoting a level of aggression that may be unexpected. While it was more beneficial to hold down the button to charge the ability, hunters could also tap the ability to do a quick poke. The charging counter poke maneuver could be used in between any of your combo moves, so forward or upward pokes could be followed up with it. However, while Try allowed you to follow up after the final hit in the forward or upward poke combo, Portable 3rd Onward removed this ability. Hunters can either focus on poking twice into a counter, which will reset their combo, or sidestepping after the finisher in order to reset. Generation 3 really added a lot to complement the weapon's defensive capabilities, but it's time to move on to Generation 4 and see what was added via verticality, jumping attacks, arts, and styles. 
One new inclusion in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate that wasn't seen in the game's original release is the ability to chain sidesteps and guard dashes together. Hunters can now lunge forward with a protective guard dash and then sidestep out of it immediately for effective evasive options. They can also finally follow up with an upward poke or an arc swing after a shield bash if they decide to. For jumping attacks, the lance can perform a forward thrust while midair, but hunters can also use guard dash off a ledge to keep their shield out during their descent. Similar to how guard dash fully protects hunters while moving forward, this will protect them while they are in the air and it's possible to follow it up with a shield bash as you land. Alternatively, you can press R, X, and A together in order to enter into a charging advance from the air or perform the aerial thrust by pressing X. The charging advance also received a small new mechanic where the hunter can hold back and press the X button in order to do a turnaround wide sweep maneuver. It's good for repositioning if overshooting the charging advance and can help make sure you're facing the monster as often as possible. Additionally, similar to the insect glaive, the lance can actually jump during this charging maneuver by pressing forward and B. The hunter will jump while running forward, meaning it has the ability to perform mounting damage without the necessity of a ledge, making it very useful for mounting monsters in this generation. Now, Generations Ultimate seem to have the lance dominated by a specific hunter style, that being Striker. Outside of styles and arts, there weren't many large mechanical changes to the weapon, so we'll focus on the generation-specific inclusions. Striker allowed the hunter to bring up to three hunting arts while keeping almost every base mechanic of the lance intact. The only thing you actually lose is the wide sweep, the jumping charging attack, and the turnaround sweep, which is hardly a loss considering how much extra you're bringing to the table. While Striker benefits from having most of its moveset and up to three arts, where it really shines is in its charging advance mechanic, because the poking finisher you can do out of said charging attack has its motion values boosted to something like 67, which is ridiculously powerful in comparison to the rest of the weapon's moveset. This leads to the main strategy being to spam said finisher as often as possible. Another reason players preferred using this style over the others is due to the game changing the final poke within the triple combo to a multi-poke that wasn't as effective as the original. Striker keeps the original poking combo making it much more beneficial to use. Absolute Readiness is one of the general hunting arts that will fit into one of the three striker slots, but you'll still be bringing two lance specific arts if you want to be the most effective. The first is Corkscrew Jab, which leaves you defenseless during a large charge up animation, but makes up for this with a high damage long range attack. When I say long range, I mean that the attack extends past the length of the lance slightly, meaning your position can be a bit safer overall as well. I assume this would generally be best used during big openings to get off a large portion of damage in between combos or charging advances. It's a multi-hit move as well, meaning it's great for fishing for flinches or staggers. The second big ability for Lance would have to be the Enraged Guard, which is an amazing ability due to the amount of attack boost you can get out of it, which is based on the attack that you deflect. See, Enraged Guard will allow you to block an incoming attack and in turn absorb said damage and apply it to your Lance. The amount of damage you intake will be within something like three tiers, meaning weak or medium hits will give you a smaller damage boost overall in comparison to some of the meteor hits a monster can throw out. A red aura around your weapon is the lowest boost at 10%, followed by orange at 20%, and then finally yellow at 30. The tier of this ability will also lengthen the duration of it, with three tiers lasting somewhere around three minutes, meaning that if you couple it with corkscrew jab or with high motion value abilities like your charging advanced finisher, you're going to be absolutely decimating monsters in very short periods of time. If you're disappointed I didn't cover more about the lance in Generations Ultimate, please keep in mind that I like to focus focus on whatever the meta was at the time to give you an idea of how the weapon could function at its highest potential. If you want to learn more about the other styles, there's full guides out there on YouTube that I can recommend. In the meantime, let's check out Generation 5. Like all weapons that have a sidestep mechanic, World improves on it by making the sidestepping faster and more fluid, while also allowing the hunter to forward hop as an addition to back hopping. Back and forward hopping are still available within the neutral position, while side hopping must be used as a follow up from either a previous hop or an attack. Guard dash is now multi-directional. While you can still perform it at any time with its forward motion, you can use it as a follow up to a move or sidestep and guard dash to either side or backwards. There's a new move out of guard dash called leaping thrust, performed by pressing forward and circle during the guard dash animation. It's a good opener due to its multi-hit properties, and it counts as the first hit in your triple thrust combo, meaning you can follow it up with two more pokes. World also introduces a brand new addition to the Lance's charged counter mechanic. By pressing the X button while charging up the counter, the hunter will enter into a new mechanic known as Power Guard. This ability can last as long as your stamina does, and will be depleting it at an incredibly fast rate, but this is useful for two reasons. First is the fact that the guard is potentially the most powerful in the game with minimal chip damage. Second, the 
attack will pause stamina drain as long as you are being attacked, meaning multi-hit attacks from a monster can be fully blocked by this attack with no stamina loss. And the gauge will begin to drain again afterward. You can do a few things out of this mechanic as well, such as manually activating the counter thrust with circle or pressing triangle to perform the new leaping thrust attack. You can even perform a charge out of the power guard if you feel like it. Something I haven't mentioned yet but may have seemed obvious is that the shield only protects you from the front, but the benefit of power guard is that it has a 360 degree radius. The charging advance has also been upgraded in an interesting way, specifically the speed in which you run forward will increase after a set duration of the advance, allowing you to quickly sprint towards monsters with your weapon unsheathed. Holding back in X will allow you to turn in place without ending the charging advance, and you can even charge into runnable surfaces like the wall in the training area in order to leap off of them and continue your attack from the air. You can even side hop while moving forward. And finally, if performing the thrust finisher while moving at the enhanced speed, you'll perform a finishing twin thrust maneuver instead. This twin thrust maneuver can also be activated while sliding if the hunter starts the slide with the weapon unsheathed by performing the charging advance downhill. In Iceborne, the additions to Lance all focus around the new guard mechanic. While Lance can traditionally hold R2 in order to guard, holding L2 will now cause the weapon to not only guard, but ready the slinger for a slinger burst. The downside of this guard is that you can't move while using it, but the upside is that the slinger burst can be used out of it and followed up by either a leaping thrust or entering into a new counter claw stance. The counter claw stance is a unique way for Lance players to grapple onto a monster, allowing them to easily tenderize a monster while mitigating damage. In fact, while grappling on through this method, the hunter cannot be knocked away, unlike traditional grappling seen on other weapon options. You don't need to slinger burst to activate this counter, however. You can simply press circle while in the new slinger guard stance, or you can activate it out of the charging counter mechanic. A final additional mechanic is that the new power guard mechanic can gain a boosted effect over time. Specifically, if holding the mechanic long enough, the hunter will be able to gain guard up, allowing them to block anything, even attacks considered unblockable traditionally. Now, Monster Hunter Rise doesn't just just add new abilities through the Silkbind attacks and switch skills, it also reworks and adds to a few of the existing mechanics. For example, the Wide Sweep attack can now be charged for a higher amount of damage, making it more worthwhile to use on the hunt target rather than just a fly swatter for small monsters. The first of the switch skills is Twin Vine, which has the Lancer attach a large kunai to the monster, tethering them together, similar to how the Dual Blades did it, which you can see in my previous video. Since the Lance is so tanky, it makes sense that this ability will help aggro the monster to the Lancer while tethered. The main benefit of the kunai being attached is that hunters can perform a guarding leap at almost any distance and will travel the entire distance in the air to reach the monster. While in the air, you can perform a generic aerial thrust attack or begin a dashing attack. To be honest, if the Lance takes any L, Twin Vine is absolutely the biggest. The fact of the matter is that while the ability has utility, overall it pales in comparison to the other Lance options, and the fact that you can't switch it out hurts the Lance the most in Rise overall. Anchor Rage is the next Silk Bind ability and is essentially just the Enraged Guard ability from Generations Ultimate, meaning you'll gain a temporary attack boost by blocking an attack, and the level of said boost is dependent on the damage of the attack you take. The overall damage of the boost has been nerfed significantly. I believe a full attack boost is something like 15% in comparison to GU, which was 30%. The final Silk Bind attack is Spiral Thrust, which has a few levels of mechanics around it. The basic gist of it is that the skill will launch you forward with an attack, but you can quickly input a direction during the animation to perform a follow-up. Now, the added level of complexity and viability is that the startup of the attack is with a guard point, and if said guard point is hit, the attack will not only perform extra damage, but apply a blue aura around the weapon for a short period of time. While the blue aura is active, the weapon will deal additional damage. On to switch skills, the charging advance attack or dash attack can be swapped out for the shield charge, which will produce a shorter, finite dash, but with the shield kept out to block incoming attacks. The finisher of this motion is a shield bash for high KO damage, making it viable for knocking out the monster. The traditional guard of the lance can even be switched out for an instant block maneuver, which acts as a guard point counter attack, allowing the lancer to follow up with the cross slash ability, a move that hits twice and has high motion values. This is a tight counter, but effectively makes it so that the Lance player doesn't need to guard for long periods of time and can instead use a skill-based system to reward themselves with more overall damage output. The Lance gained the ability to be a little more proactive and less of a turtle as it made its way through each generation, and we saw that culminate and rise with the insta-block maneuver and an overall boost in maneuverability with Generation 5. But with that, I believe there's nothing else to really talk about. 
Overall, the Lance feels like it was possibly one of the weapons to stay the most untouched throughout the generation. Some weapons see big mechanical changes, but the Lance stayed fairly simplistic overall, and each addition was a nice touch to the weapon that didn't add too much depth to make it confusing. It's very simple, but you can tell it has a high skill ceiling to be effective, which is what makes a weapon great in my opinion. It's always good to see something that is deceivingly easy turn out to take a lot of practice to become adept at, and I think the Lance comes off as a fairly rewarding experience for any hunter that is willing to put the time into it. Anyway, that's all I have for you today in regards to the Lance. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what your favorite weapon is and what weapon you want me to cover next. I'm also streaming regularly on Twitch now and our Discord is growing rapidly, so if you want to join the community and maybe participate in viewer hunts, feel free to stop by. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you made it this far, this is the, the credits, the Patreon credits, where I, talk, I thank people for doing the Patreon thing. Thank you so much. If you want to do the Patreon thing, you, you can. You can do it. Think about it. Karen Tall, thank you so much for the G-Rank tier. I appreciate it. Carl the Crab, thank you so much for the G-Rank tier. Amazing. Void Paradox, thanks so much. I appreciate it. It's great to have you guys. I am Kanan, thank you so much for the G rank tier. I can't believe it, guys. The G so many, so many G ranks. So many, so many G ranks. Maz, thank you so much for the G rank tier. I appreciate it. I hope you're having a hope you're having a great day, Maz. Hope you're having a hope you're having a sick one. Mo Al Kasemi. Or sorry, sorry if I didn't did if I didn't pronounce that right. I'm sorry. Uh, but thank you for the G rank tier. I hope I hope you have a great day. Rob3, thank you so much. One of the Raid Cult, probably multiple other people in there that are part of the Raid Cult. Thank you so much for the G-Rank tier. Agatosh, thank you for the G-Rank tier. I appreciate it. We do a little gaming. We do a little Patreon. And thank you so much for the uh, G-Rank tier. It's amazing. Thank you. You're you're fantastic. Kinky King, thank you so much for the G-Rank tier. Ryan Marion, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Cyberworm, thank you for the G-Rank tier again. Mogabit, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Loose Tall Goose, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Kathleen Mejuk, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Crunchy Kauru, thank you for the G-Rank tier. I appreciate it. Jonathan, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Amazing. Thank you so much. Strange Lee, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Ben VB, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Lud Hafumi, thank you for the G-Rank tier. I appreciate it. Rosa Leo, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Justin Ragel, thank you for the G-Rank tier. Pepler, thank you for the G-Rank tier. And finally, Mr. Janky, Thank you for the G-Rank tier. As always, guys, I really appreciate it. If you want to be shouted out by me or you want to have your name in the credits, which I'm looking I'm looking at the computer screen, should be right here, uh, feel free to pledge, and you can. It's great, and it helps support the channel. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you in the next video.